Okay. Um, um, I have questions for each of you, and I, I'm not sure how much time there is, but I'll start with you, uh, Ms. Pamata, and that is that even without this, this bill, I understand, and we are all aware of Ms. Blackstock's, uh, uh, I would go so far to call it harassment of what mm -hmm. has happened, and I know that even without this uh, bill, what has it been like for you and your organization when it comes to issues you're working on that you, you know, what challenges do you already face? Mm -hmm. um, that, that, that's a really good question and it was the subject of my submission to the House because what we're talking about without anything in this bill ever being passed yet, we're already overrepresented in prison even though the Supreme Court of Canada in Gladue said you have to stop imprisoning First Nations people, we're being more imprisoned, not less. When the Supreme Court of Canada in Marshall said we had a recognized treaty right to fish and sell it, DFO and the RCMP came in, rammed our boats, beat us with clubs, maced us, arrested us and put us in jail. I only have to talk about Listigouche, especially in Quebec, it's been highly problematic. Listigouche, they've invaded twice. In Oka, Ipperwash, an unarmed land defender was murdered. Uh, Gustafson Lake, one of the largest civilian attacks by the RCMP on a civilian population. <coughs> Eskinobadige, you've got Elsa Bukduk, Caledonia, it goes on and on just in terms of of the way the military has been used against First Nations people and the justice system itself we're more likely to be arrested more likely to be imprisoned I'm going to have to and stop you kind there of because things. otherwise I won't I have two more okay. questions but okay. just wanted, I just two questions uh, first with the uh, 